Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another Pacific Angler video. Today we're talking sink tips. Sink tips specifically for salmon, because it can be complicated. I'm you guys all the way from beginner levels where you can slap a Versa leader onto your floating line and get in the game. We're gonna talk about type materials, we're gonna talk about T materials, we're gonna take it all the way up to more advanced integrated lines that you might put on your single hand fly rod, all the way into switch and spay options. If you've ever wondered what the heck you've got on for a sink tip, I'm also gonna teach you a little trick to tell what you got on so you can identify it like this mess of lines that I have down here. If you stick around to the back end of the video, I am going to share what my favorite lines are. The ones I bring on every salmon trip, depending on the situations with a few strategies that you might consider. As always, you want to see more videos like this, considering the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. All right, so sink tips. Uh, sink tips are critical for salmon fishing. Uh, it, we get it all the time. People say, oh, they're jumping, oh, they're rising, they're feeding on the surface. Salmon very, very rarely feed on the surface and you're going to have to get down to their level if you want to be effective. And there's many ways to do it and that's where things get complicated. Now, if you are a beginner and you wanna get into the salmon game, the first thing you're going to look at is a Versa leader. Now, what are these? Well, the, we have to talk about a concept of density versus weight. And so when you've got a floating line, it's designed to cast on your rod when it's flying through the air at a certain weight, meaning if it's too light, it won't bend the rod, and if it's too heavy, it will overload the rod. Versa leaders are designed to be as light as physically possible, but very, very dense, so they still sink. So we can add that to your floating line and it's not gonna overload the rod. Now, they come in one inches per second, three inches per second, five inches per second, six inches per second, all the way up to seven, maybe even eight inches per second, depending on the brand. Now, because they are lighter, they do get affected by current. Because they still have some density, they are going to affect your cast and your floating line isn't going to be perfect to turn them over. But if you're in a pinch, putting one of these in your top pocket when you're out trout fishing to be able to get down, or if you're new to it and you don't want to invest a lot of money, Buying a few of these, a light one and a heavy one is what I recommend is the first way to get into the sink tip salmon game. Now, let's say you want to have something a little bit more specialized for salmon. We always recommend the Versa tip style lines. Let's talk about what they are first before we get into it. They aren't just a floating line. They're actually a line that is cut back. Back in the day, we didn't have Versa tips and we physically had to cut back sinking lines so that we would take the weight off the floating line. That would then allow us to add weight back in so that when we were casting, the rod was loading the same, but when it hit the water, it was sinking. Now, these lines come in a different weights, and that's so they can match up with the different weight of Versa tip. So if you have a Versa tip line designed for a five weight, it's gonna have a relatively light floating portion. You need to take off the added floating portion, and you're gonna add on a tip that is balanced for that. Now, those tips come in different densities. They come in intermediate, type one, they come in type three, they come in type six, and they come in type eight. They're all the same weight designed for your rod, but they're going to have the different densities. They do this by impregnating the line with tungsten. And so when we're out fishing, I really like to consider the beginners look at the type three, which is about three to four inches per second on the sinking rate. But for most of my work, most of our guiding work, the type six is an excellent one to get down deep quick. Now, let's talk tea material, because it's something that's come out in maybe the last 20 years. It's not all that new, but it's used quite a bit by spay guys, it's used quite a bit by switch guys, and it can also be used on your single hands, but we've got to talk about it a bit. What is it, first of all? Well, what they did was they took the most tungsten they could impregnate into a line uh, before it would literally disintegrate, and they came up with the tea material. That tea material is the same, whether it says T8 or T17, just more of it is extremely extruded over the core to give it that weight. Now the coating T and types, that was kind of confusing, but what T stands for is the amount of tungsten in the line per foot. So when you see T8, it's actually eight grains per foot 
in weight. Now, how does that apply? Well, let's think about our floating line again. Remember, we're taking grains off so it loads correctly in the air. And you guys can do some quick math. If you can take 100 grains off of your floating line, either by cutting or looking at a versus tip to see the balance, you can put about 13 feet of T8 on and it's still gonna load the rod really nicely. Flip around, however, and we're looking at T14, T17, and God forbid, T20. Putting it onto a single hand Versa tip line is not a good idea and it's definitely not a good idea to put any of the T materials onto a standard tapered floating line. You will want to cut it back. Now, where does it come in in sink rate? T material is interesting. The sink rates aren't maybe as high as you would think, but because they are so heavy, they do kick through current really nicely. T8 sinks at about five to seven inches per second. T11 sinks at about six to eight inches per second. T14 is in the seven to nine inches per second. T17 and T20 push that 10 inches per second range, which is very, very, very fast. Now, where do we use it the most? Well, you spay guys can use the T material quite easily on any of your six weight and above rods. Just make sure that the heavier it is, you know that this line is going to stick harder to the water and popping it out off of a D loop is going to be more challenging as well as snagging when you're making anchor moves and placements. The other thing we can use it for is in those Versa tip lines. I sometimes put T8, even T11 on my Versa tip if I want to get a little extra weight and depth in heavy currents where things are moving around. All right, now the last thing. Let's say you want to get a dedicated salmon setup. You know your spot. You know that you need to either get down or not that down. You can buy an integrated line in very similar sink rates to all the stuff we've just discussed as tips added on. That's going to be integrated throughout the line. Now, this is way better. First off, they're going to design the line to balance the rod perfectly. There's no math. We don't have to be in high school again and break out our calculators. But also you're going to find there's less hinging. And as well as when we're stripping the line back in, we're going to have less loop to loop connections, which can be a real pain in the butt at that 10 to 15 foot range, which is when a lot of the coho or pinks tend to bite. There are a couple other things when it comes to dedicated sink tip lines that are kind of cool, kind of new. Rio, SA, and Airflow have come up with density compensated lines or ones that have a intermediate type three, type five, or some breakdown of densities so that the line is more straight when it's under the water. If you guys think about it, we've got our floating line and we've got our sink tip here. That angle right there is line that you have to pull out when a fish bites or when you're trying to set the hook. These lines will have a slow, gradual increase in density, which makes the line much straighter. It also cuts down under the surface of the water where the water moves slower. The concept is that the closer you are to the surface of the water, the faster it moves. And if you want a smooth, slow swing, breaking that surface tension, getting down a foot is very, very critical. You see a lot of Chinook anglers, specifically targeting Chinook in deep, heavy water, will want a very, very long portion of sinking, but they want some of it relatively close to the surface so you can still mend, you can still pick up, and you can still fish effectively. Now, the other concept when it comes to sinking tip lines that are integrated is sometimes we actually want a floating portion to stay up and we want it to get down really quickly. I see this a lot in smaller streams where we might have a gut where we want the line to float, we want to be able to mend and control things, but we want to get down fast. I personally love a 10 foot heavy, heavy integrated sink tip when it comes to a lot of my bull trout fishing on smaller streams like the Skagit, maybe like a few of the tributaries up Squamish way or out Valley way because I can get out and down really quickly. All right, now I'm gonna teach you guys a quick secret on how the heck to tell what you've got on because sometimes it's confusing. You look at my bin of lines. I got a pretty good gauge of what they all are and I use these tricks to help. First one is color. Well, we talked about the colors of T materials. The other trick is you can look at the diameter because as we remember, it's eight grains per foot at T8, it's 14 grains at T14. So T14 is by nature thicker. Now let's look at the type series. Well, the type series is going to actually have a very similar uh, weight to it because they're designed to cast with those rods, but color does play a factor as well. Obviously your loops are gonna be color coded depending on your manufacturer, but you can look at the actual line to tell that too. Why? Tungsten's dark. The more tungsten we pump into a line, the darker it gets. And so you're going to see type threes look sort of a brownie color. Type six will look a lot darker. And then obviously eights will be very dark. You can also look at the diameter because remember the same weight so even though it is way more dense it is going to be the same weight so it's got to be skinnier so the skinny lines can actually be very very deep sinking this is also said for your 
inches per second type lines. You will see color changes in the hue depending on how much tungsten they have. So next time you're out, you see your buddy fishing, you don't have to ask which tip he's using. You can just look at it. If it's a light brown color, you know it's sort of in the medium range. If it's a dark color, you know it's probably on the heavier scale. And if it is clear, it is obviously that intermediate line, which is basically neutral buoyancy or 1.5 inches per second sink rate. Now, what do I love? What are my favorite sink tips? Well, there's lots, but if I had to only take one sinking line, it would be the integrated intermediate type three, type five. If I were blindfolded and I didn't know where I was going, I would definitely take the Versa tip line. I use this a ton, I guided this a ton. The versatility of it is amazing. If I knew I was going to a slow stream or I was fishing back channels, I do really like an integrated intermediate line, very, very effective. And lastly, on my T series, if I'm spay fishing, it's gonna be T11. Sometimes I jump up to T14, sometimes I go to eight, but T11 is usually where I start the day. And I'm not too scared to take that T11 and throw it on a Versa tip system in a pinch if I really, really wanna get down. All right, guys, that's everything I've got for you. Now, I got another video on what to put in front of the sink tip. I'm gonna put that guy up here. This is our salmon leaders video where we break it down. It's way simpler than sink tips. And I'll throw some other fun stuff down here, maybe some flies, maybe some technique stuff. And as always, you wanna see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll catch you in the next one.